this charming Smith's cast. Today you have the handsome hooligans in front of you. From left to right, Steven, Casimir, and Mark. And we're back after a pretty couple week absence. Yeah. So I'm got that other episode posted. Sorry, but people are demanding it. Um, They're clamoring in the streets. Clamoring yeah. And, uh, oh, dang it, I just took a picture of the thing. Um, <laughs> no, Oliver's uh, Sinise oh. on our last episode says, haven't seen a This Charming Smith's cast in a while. Are you guys still making them? <laughs> Did you respond? I, I assured him okay. that we are still making them. Okay, good. We're just not posting them anymore, so. <laughs> <laughs> No, no that's, but, that's on but actually Oliver, or it was Oliver, right? Oliver, um, he he just posted a video, or a couple videos, one of him playing a Jimi Hendrix song, he's oh, a okay. guitar player, but another one of him and some of his friends playing uh, Barbarism. Barbarism Begins at Home. With the whip? No, uh, no not, but... but so he's playing guitar, his friend's oh. singing, and the girl's playing bass. So yeah. we invite also you... also got a drummer, too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor drummer never gets any respect. Twenty-five percent for the drummer. <laughs> but uh, um, so check. I liked it on our thing. So check it out. So check we'll, out we'll, his we'll Oliver. We'll post the link to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's in the liked videos of ours too. Okay. So check it out. You know, give him some more views. That he's from Australia, which is oh nice. I, I believe if we're if I'm if we're wrong. Oliver, just let yeah. us know. Now we know who the Australian view is. Australian. Like uh, when we were when we were looking at all the stats, like uh, two yeah, ago, like, we were like, "Where's this Australian yeah. from?" So I anyway, know. it was cool. It's cool. It's like yeah, we're kind of worldwide. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot. Our forty views are Smith scattered throughout. Wide tour. Our, it, it could also be galactic wide too who knows you know who's pulling oh it yeah they're out there in the you know i know what you're going ether. from omicron percy i8 you guys don't watch futurama do you no i grow <laughs> i live in the same house as him <laughs> he's like you know, you know that i does. do <laughs> you didn't say anything <laughs> what do you want me to say so for those futurama lovers if we you know if, if uh, omicron percy i8 uh, has it, then Lur is going to be uh, hopefully watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, it, so um, anyway, thanks for for um, commenting. And Oliver, we got... <laughs> you just, <laughs> give us your address and you get, you're getting a, yourself this, this copy of Morsi's List of the Lost. It's almost like a punishment yeah. to comment. That's why nobody's commenting. No, we can uh, tell, you, tell you what. We can forge Morrissey's signature for you. Yeah, all you have to do is just take a pen and do this. Yeah. yeah. Then you're done. But, um, I can't okay, write. so that, that, that uh, episode 14, which we're now calling the lost episode. Yep. I'll post it. I will post it. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> But it'll be posted. It'll be posted. Actually, Dave, our number one fan, the guy that was stalking you guys at the thing, he, he's he been looking forward to the new one, too. So he's like, when's it coming out? So anyway, it'll be posted, guys. Don't worry. Calm <laughs> you know, we're, down. We're just like Morrissey now. <laughs> My new album's coming out. We can't no find way. anybody, any record, com any company to, that wants to produce it or put a, any label to take yeah, us. But YouTube hey. has told us they don't want to distribute us anymore. Yeah. So today we're still going over the singles. Um, we're not. We're uh, today we're going to be going over Ask. Ask. Okay. The Golden Lights. You just haven't earned it yet, baby, and then we'll see how far. Okay, how long now it takes. you just haven't earned it yet, baby. Tell them about that. What? One. Well, we'll get no, to no, it. I know, but that wasn't a real single. Yeah, it wasn't. It was never released on a single, so I almost missed it until. But fortunately, Kaz let me borrow this book, uh, "Songs to Save Your Life," and which is a very fantastic book. By it me. is, and I was like, "Ooh, I should have had this whole time. We could have been." Actually, seeming like we knew about the Smiths. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Instead of just one of us. It's, we, we just came off the street and we're like, hey, you're doing right. a Smiths cast? Yeah. We can do that. <laughs> all, all, here's how it works all of us have heard the Smiths. Uh, all of us have different One of us uh, 
knows all the facts about the Smiths, and two of us know the actual lyrics to the Smiths. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, am I in any of those categories? No. <laughs> like, I know the two that know the lyrics are you guys, <laughs> but one of us know the facts about the Smiths, and I'm kind of thinking that's not me either. <laughs> and one of us just came up with the idea to have this miscast. I that's know. me. That's Mark. <laughs> so he actually gets 60%. <laughs> that's right. I get 35 and Kaz gets 5. <laughs> <laughs> does that even add? Yeah, that does add up. Hey, yeah, don't worry. 5% of nothing. And we get 60% of nothing. So. Look at that. Yeah. He's sitting there thinking in his mind. He's like, son of a gun. Ends, I'm going to take my dad and throw him off a cliff. There are no cliffs around here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's no cliffs around here. Son of a gun. <laughs> Why can't we be in a cliffy place? Like Dover. The white cliffs of Dover. Oh, yeah. Throw you off those. I do want to go see those. Eventually. You know they're they're made I heard they're made out of carbon dioxide. Is that true? Like the it's I don't know. Like the it's all I'm sure it's possible. You know That's what we should make if all If you wanna gas go see out. the white cliffs of Dover. There be bluebirds over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's an old song. <laughs> Do you know what song I'm talking about? <laughs> if there's uh, something you'd like to try, ask, ask me. me. I would say, say no. How could I? Hey, that's good. Lost. There you go. Okay. That's Whoa. Lost. And that throws us right into the song. So this this uh, first one up is. So yeah, it came out uh, October twentieth of nineteen eighty six. Okay. Hold on, let me cue it up here. And are we ready? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit, so it's still okay. in the background while we talk. Okay. That way, you know. They won't get there. us. Yeah. Anyway, I love this song. Um, very fun song. Especially when when you're oh you got the actual ass single yeah I do Here what's on what what else is on oh golden lights golden lights and where's I think it's a song that they'd already there what is the other the is it just golden lights mm -hmm. oh no, no it's cemetery gates oh that's why what's yeah. the what, is there any uh, inscription on that one or is that the U.S. one um, no that's a, well he's got a colored sleeve it's not that plastic thing it looks it looks like a turf trade. Um, Oh, Inscription. There's no, there's no Are you loathsome tonight? Oh! Other side? Are you loathsome tonight? To whom it may concern. Oh! Clever. So, um, this one's an interesting thing. This is, they had Craig Gannon. Um, is this the first single that they had Craig Gannon on? I think Dang so. It. I, I, well, anyway, I don't know if it's the first single, but, but it, I Craig Gannon is... ended up suing him because he claimed that he were, he came up with the chords for it. No, from what I understand, this is the first song that Craig Gannon learned how to play. The well, first I, song that he learned. No, I because I, I him and no, what happened was Craig Gannon played with them on this. Yeah. That the, they hadn't written it yet, so Johnny Marr and him kind of worked in the studio together on it. Oh, uh, so Gannon yeah, was thinking he... he, was he, he yeah, credits. but actually, according to the, the book, uh, Craig Get Mort, or Johnny Marr um, had writ, you there's recordings of him doing it earlier, you know, oh. kind of working it out earlier, so... But anyway, what's his name ended up getting all the money you wanted for it, so... Yeah. Really? Yeah, he sued... He, Whenever the Smiths finally quit talking to him enough and he finally got the clue that they don't want him in the band. <laughs> no, that's basically what happened. That he... Don't worry about it, Mark. It's... What's your face? Yeah. So, but we're, we're talking about us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, uh, he ended up suing the Smiths, you know, claiming that he wrote Ask. That uh, he's the one that actually formed the band. <laughs> no, <laughs> basically. But uh, the the new Mike Joyce they call him. Yeah, Mike Joyce. No, Mike Joyce was the new Craig Gannon. If you think <laughs> yeah. about it. Yeah. See, Mike Joyce was kind of upset that Craig Gannon was shoving in on his territory. <laughs> yeah. So 
Anyway, but this song is really good. One, one of my favorite song, Smith songs, I think. It's just one of those ones that I think anybody would like. Yeah. And it's got cute lyrics, you know, just kind of... Steve, can you read us some of those lyrics? Okay. Coyness is nice, but coyness can stop you from saying all the things in life that you want to. Okay. It's true. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Uh, so if there's something that you'd like to try, if there's something that you'd like to try, ask me. I won't say no. How could I? So it's basically kind of, yeah, I always like this one. Uh, um, but here, here's probably my favorite line in this. Because if it's not love, then it's the bomb that will bring us. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best one. It's like, hey, either way, you're going to... You're good. We're coming together. That's, that is the, that is the best like, lyric. You the know, bomb. So, I mean, it's the 80s. Yeah, you don't Cold love war. The, the nuclear war is going to start, so mm -hmm. we might as well, you know, get together. Yeah, either way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably my favorite, my favorite uh, line from that, uh, from that song. Yeah. You know what? So you got the... Um, basic your basic uh the basic song um dang it i had a note here uh can you play it or i like that there's there's a part where they do the change up at 130 at 130 okay yeah where it kind of goes into this like ocean and seagulls and it's kind of this cool oh little, yeah you've got the time now yeah and okay instead of having seagull <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. yeah here it is Okay, it, it's coming up. I want to turn it down a little bit. Just so we don't get dinged. Yeah. We're getting dinged by. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I love that part. And then. I love that. Like, it goes into that kind of sea breeze, sea and the seagulls, but then it has that build up. Yeah. And back into the same song. I love like that yeah. little break or whatever you call it. Yeah. I mean, it's something that well, they the Smiths started to have later that they didn't have earlier. You know, because before Johnny Marr was like, yeah, just always going. You know, so they got a little more creative. No, I I do like that. Um. Oh. So, one, oh God. No, you speak. I was gonna say one thing is. John Porter is back again yeah. on this song. Yep. And uh, he does a good job. Yeah, he does. He, but uh, he didn't feel that this. He wanted to take it in one direction, and Morrissey, uh, who's that? Christy McCullough, that sang back. Christy McCullough. No, the, Christy McCall. Christy McCall. Okay, that's how you say it. Um, is it her husband. I don't know. Kirsty, Christy. <laughs> anyway, her it's husband ended McCall. up. Steve Lillywhite was her husband. Oh, he was a producer. Yeah. So John Porter produced this, and he was already ready to uh, mix it. The, the Smith, this is the single they did right before they went on tour in the U.S. And John Porter's like, hey, whenever you get back, we're going to mix it. And, but Morrissey just decided, because he, he always had some kind of thing with about Johnny Marr and John Porter because they kind of jived. Yep. Always, there's always this jealousy there. He he decided to that Steve Lillywhite was gonna was gonna mix it, and so actually uh, one thing that John Porter says is it it kind of lost some of the things it had. Like it's basic. We me and Kaz were just screwing around with it, and it's his basic chords. You know, yeah. and he said it was more of kind of like a Ramonesy kind of basic <laughs> song, but then they they mixed it. I mean, not to say that it was they. I I still like it, but actually, I got a uh, the original uh, the original um, demo demo. Yeah. Okay, that's her. So this is before Steve Lilly White got in there. Is it playing it over here or is it playing on my phone? Playing on here. Oh crap. Dang it. Okay, I, I think we're going to try that again. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, but you can hear kind of the basicness of it. And then there's this, whenever it does the... 
Is it connected? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, let's try this again. Hold on. Now I need to turn it sideways. Guys, just show me. So kind of like, hey, I can see the Ramones. Like, which street called the <laughs> but no, I, I well. But uh, and then and then. What Mark said. But street bop. That's not what you said. What I said. You said street bop dumb. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you did. Kaz. You were just like scatting. Scatting. <laughs> My voice is an instrument, man. <laughs> I'm scatting, but listen to this. Okay, this is this is the interesting part. Now speaking of scatting, this is almost like jazz. Okay. Okay, listen to this. It's kind of weird. Like I don't think I like it. But anyway, so that. That's the original. I think that I think actually, no matter what John Porter says, I think it's a really good mix. Yeah. I think Steve Lillywhite mm -hmm. did good, um, and it probably could have been a good mix, but I don't. I'm not crazy about those drums. Yeah. I like drums, but that's that. It doesn't fit. Smiths. Yeah, it's not the Smiths. It doesn't fit, and if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. That's right. If the glove doesn't fit, you must If quit. the drums don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Kaz, you want to Kaz, say Kaz, do you even know what that's from? No, I don't. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. We're so old, Steve. So, you, you know what? Talking about how, it's, how we're so old. So I was showing them a clip from Fast Times at Ridgemont High where they were handing back these mimeographed papers, you know, these copied papers. Everybody grabs them and then picks them up and smells them and goes... <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And Kaz was looking at, why are they doing that? Because <laughs> so it had a really song, strong chemical scent. Yeah. I had to explain to him back then how you copied stuff is you, you basically put drugs out on paper for all the yeah. kids to get high on. <laughs> I wonder, remember like a uh, uh, sharp or the. Yeah, the, permanent. Yeah, the old markers. Dude, yeah. those will get you high. The, 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 the like brown, the brown striped ones. Yeah, man, those are strong. Anyway. Yeah. So. Kaz, what do you have to say about this song? Um, here's what I have to say about this song. I was actually going to ask you a question. Well, ask me. I can't say no. <laughs> you can't say no. I won't say no. How about um, that? Dang it! Do you, uh, do you think this song is more about just like a plea for like uh, openness and honesty and love or just like a warning about nuclear fallout? Because I know people take kind of like two sides on mm -hmm. this because a lot of people uh, think that it's just Morrissey kind of being uh, hidden in his, in his message of, hey, you better uh, start working together, otherwise we're all going to be dead. And it's the bomb that's going to bring us together, not love. So if you don't, I, I think, I always, I always took it as that it was just his way of um, I don't think it's yeah warning so, against nuclear thing. I think it's just his way of being clever and being nuclear. like. Nuclear. It's pronounced nuclear. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you said nuclear. <laughs> nuclear. What do you? What else do you say? What do you nuclear. call Nuclear. That's what I said. That's no. what you just said twice. No, you said nuclear. Nuclear. Okay, so anyway. Scorpion. <laughs> scorpion. You also. How do you say scorpion? <laughs> scorpion. <laughs> But I used to say squirpion. <laughs> Squir Squirpion. Squirpion. See? Oh, man. Tomato, tomato, nuclear, nuclear. How does your mom talk? Come on. That's Hi. No. <laughs> oh, come on. My mom? Yeah. yeah. From Joy Z. Yeah, she, she doesn't have the big, strong jersey. You, At least said that she used to remember her. Yeah. She I used mean, to. She used to have a really thick one too. Sometimes she'd be talking to you. Well, yeah, she says sometimes she says say? she says water or whatever, you know. Like, but so maybe I don't know. I think I might be partly deaf or something too. But, you know, like. So in answer to that, Kaz, you have to think back at the '80s and uh -huh. even back in in uh, Morrissey's time when he grew up. 
during the, the high points of the Cold War, which was the 50s and the 60s, right? Uh huh. So there's a line in here, you know, that I brought up. If it's not love, then it's the bomb. Nature's a language, can't you read? So back then, and this was even in Greece, right? Where, where they kind of played on this too. It was like, uh -huh. come Greece on, baby. Baseball. Come on, baby. You, you can sleep with me. I mean, this might be our last night together. The bomb's coming down to Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so it's a line. That, that's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of picturing this as being. It's like, hey, I know you don't love me, but the bomb's coming, baby. Come on, we can do it. What is that? <laughs> is that in stretch out and wait? Wait, we're. Oh no, no, no. But yeah, we're. If we. Yeah, this could be it. Yeah. So, ask me. <laughs> ask me anything. You know, just let's do this. Yeah, so it's almost like a. It's just a clever pickup line, like yeah. you know this nil this uh, nihilist uh, kind of thing, like, hey, you know. I mean, well, well, that that's yeah, how I look at it. That's a, so I like I that. I don't think it's a, a warning against nuclear war. I think it's more like, hey, come on, you know, I'm lonely. You're lonely. The bomb might come tomorrow. You know, why not? <laughs> that kind of thing. So. And you know, it does go with stretch out and wait, though. Because you got this, this destruction, you know, the concrete and clay in general, the clay, decay. decay. Dang it! <laughs> it's like, hey, Mark, you'll... Nature you'll must still find a way, so that's what he's saying, too. Hey, you know what? We're all going to be destroyed, so let's just, just at, you know, let's just get our animal urges out. Don't be afraid to ask me. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, another thing is, this song uh, is one of the... Is one of the films by Derek Jarman. Uh, hmm? Oh, so, the, the video. Yeah. Yeah, the video. So the Smiths weren't too big on videos, but the record company approached uh, Morrissey and kind of tricked them into saying, "Listen, it won't be a music video. It'll be a film by Derek Jarman." Uh, and so Morrissey was like, "Oh yes." Oh, Derek, Derek Jarman. And it ended up being just a... Oh, yes. And it ended up being just a video, though. Yeah, right? it, it ended yeah. up being a video. I think I've seen it. I haven't... I haven't. Same uh, with How Soon Is Now. I mean, they, they convinced them into... Well, they, that yeah, one was yeah. a little more... That one... No, that was like a 10-minute, 10, minute, uh, ten minute, like, short. No, that's uh, The Queen Is Dead you're thinking of. Not How Soon Is Now. I thought it was How Soon Is... No, How Soon Is Now is the one where they went behind the Smiths back and made a video that uh, Morrissey and Marr kind of... Uh, okay. Dislike. Okay. Yeah. Dislike. I, they hate it. So ask me. This is a great. I think this is a great single. Yep. I think it's a, a great one of their top singles. I mean, maybe. Maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I think this was a really good A side. Yes. Really, really catchy. Ask me. You know, it's got all the elements that a good single needs if you want to sell. Yeah. So, does anybody have anything else to say about this song? Um, they needed more. They needed more cowbell. Cowbell. <laughs> there was no cowbell in here. No. That was what was miss, missing between both versions. <laughs> like it was like cowbell. Cover art is really good. I like that. That lady always reminded. Like, I always thought, she's wearing, like, a leather jacket. I always thought her face looked like leather, too. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I always thought when I, when I had so that single. From, I don't know. From what Mark uh, <laughs> thinks is a really, really amazing single to its B-side. Mark, you want to oh, yeah. bring us into that? Hey, you don't want to be brought into this world of... Pain. Okay. <laughs> Golden lights displaying your name. Sorry. Okay, so that's the original by Twinkle, which was a bad, it was bad back then. <laughs> oh my gosh, no! This is so good, listen. Golden 
turn up a little bit. This is... Okay, pause it. Like, that little, like, chorus of people singing is so cheesy. You like, do you like this song? I thought we were saying it was a bad song. <laughs> this is one of the Smiths' worst songs ever put out. A lot of people I consider. plead the fifth. <laughs> a lot of people get it. <laughs> Sir. Your Honor. <laughs> What's uh, well, how, how does uh, uh, Richmond say it? Yes, Your, Your Honor. honor. <laughs> no, that, that's no. not Richmond. It's uh, it's uh, uh, denim. Yeah, not, not denim, but uh, uh, Renum. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Mr. Renum is the one that says, "Yes, your auto." Yeah. Um, uh, what, what, what's his name? Uh, Den uh, Denim Son. That's what I'm saying. That's him. Yeah, I know. I can't remember his first name. Neither can I. Neither can I, because I've never seen the freaking show, guys. It's IT Crowd. No, I know. Okay. It's yeah. actually got the girl from Humans in it, mm -hmm. which is a good show. I, I've seen a couple of episodes. So anyway, but okay, the opening is so cheesy with the little weird people singing. One thing I one thing I kind of like about the song, and again, it's just me, but I actually like that he put his. Um, Mm -hmm. The the microphone through reverb. Oh yeah, push play now. Let's hear him sing. I, why? The, that's the worst part. That's one of the worst parts about the song. It's, it's like, it sounds like, but it it sounds like he's he's uh, it, it sounds like he's actually um, singing underwater though. I know. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> It's like, like on Pinocchio and he's up talking, like, I can't even, it's, it is, yeah, he's singing underwater, Listen. and that's the good thing about this song. Listen, Mark, you would appreciate, you would appreciate this song so much more if you heard it in the original Italian. I probably would, let's see. The underwater really works the lyrics? with that, uh, with that, uh, Rome, Roman tongue. The Roman tongue, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to wait. Some scam artist is calling me right now. Uh, anyway, so, uh, I just think it's, like you said, though, it does sound like he's underwater. It's like, that actually, you know, a fun fact about this song, neither Mike Joyce or Andy Rourke play on this. Oh, really? John Porter played the bass for it. They didn't even play, have a drum. They, they did a, a computer drum track. That's how bad this song is. Like, they just, nobody could get into it. Anyway. Yeah, and wasn't uh, Johnny Marr pretty cheesed to do the song? Well, he did it, so he must have not been that cheesed. He was cheesed, he was really cheesed about work as a letter word, but that's... Yeah. But I think this might have been the first song where he's just like, gosh, this song sucks, you know, I don't really want to do it, because... I, I just think this is like a bare bones kind of song where they're like, like they said, like you said, they put that reverb on Morrissey's voice, that weird mm -hmm. chorus of people sing golden lights, you know, to to try to make it seem more interesting than it is because it's just got this bossa nova kind of do, 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 do. <laughs> like this little weird beat. Here, push play. Let's hear the the beat's kind of weird, like. It's, it sounds like an organ. What? In the background. Well, that's what they had at the beginning. Pause. They got that, you know, that kind of like cheesiness, just pure cheesiness. Anyway, hey Steve, where were you on? June 11th, 1991. I don't know. Hey, you. <laughs> I'm not claiming that. <laughs> <laughs> you, we, that's the first time we got to see Morrissey alive, man. Yes, that was. That actually. was that was pretty cool. Um, so anyway, I mean, uh, let's let's hear a little bit more Twinkle. Okay. 
You know what the thing I think? I think Morrissey just didn't, his choice in the girl bands that he, the songs he decided to do weren't ever very good. Like, why couldn't he do a good girl band song? Like what? Like Walk Like an Egyptian? No, like Hey Mr. or Please Mr. Postman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well. I just don't know why he would do a girl band song. Anyway. Well, one of the first songs they ever did was I Want a Boyfriend for My Birthday. That's true. So I know, but I'm just saying, like, he... he okay, I... Um, the, song, the songs that he redid were never, a, never good, though. There was never a song that you were just like, Oh my gosh! Like, don't remake a song if you're not going to make it better. What do you mean? They, did, they redid tons of songs, then they made it better. Like what? Like, um... um Metal Crew. <laughs> no, I forgot. No, but they, they took forgot, that... I forgot the name of the... Uh, um, my mind is just thinking about Ask right now, so it's... it's uh, it, it's on Hat Full of Hollow. We we already did it. We already we already showed that it was a Herman's Hermit song. Oh, oh girl no, afraid. but that yeah, girl afraid that no. But uh, what what I'm saying is he, they did that. That's a take on a song where the ones that where he takes the straight song yeah and does it. There, I mean, there's only a couple, but they're not they're not good. Yeah. It, whenever he it, that's the thing. Morrissey always takes songs or lines or whatever. And whenever he can change it into his own thing, that's when they become good. But whenever he takes it straight off, he's like, hey, I really like this song, let's just do that. You know, it just doesn't, if, if it's not better, then don't do it. I don't know. Or not an interesting take on it. Yeah. And putting him underwater, you know, and playing an organ behind him is not an interesting <laughs> take on it. <laughs> so anyway, that's Golden Lights. I mean, I'm not saying that whenever I used to listen to to the album, I never would skip it or anything. You know, I was just like, oh, it's a Smith song. But whenever you listen to it with the rest of the stuff, it just isn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't um, equal, it's not up to, you know, the rest of the stuff, especially when you got Ask on the A side. Maybe, maybe that's why they put Golden Lights on the, on the B side. <laughs> to make the A side look so much better. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, maybe they should have put it on the C side. Because that's where Morsi was singing. The C side, underwater, C side. Mmm. Stupid. No, I get it. <laughs> Cass, do you have anything else you want to say about the Golden Lights? He's like, no, I'm just still taking it. But it's just wow. interesting that Mike Joyce, and so this one was written without either of those two actual playing. Actually playing. Yeah. Um, they're they're fun lyrics. I really like No, it's a good lyric. Yeah, like I, I really like uh, the whole idea that the lyrics get at here. Um, and you know, sometimes sometimes, you know, the arrangement that you're using just doesn't work out or Is this uh, like in this instance. Yeah. I don't know. Um, okay, let's I, ask you I, guys. On, when I first discovered this song I thought that uh, it was actually Johnny Marr singing at the beginning, because <laughs> I didn't know a lot of, a lot about uh, the Smiths, and I thought it was Johnny Marr singing at the beginning because I was just like, I mean, I think it's you've Christy, got a, yeah, Christy McCall or yeah, something. But That's what say. I thought it was really funny. So whenever I hear this song in my mind, I just kind of hear, uh, or I just kind of picture Johnny Marr uh, singing. <laughs> and uh, it's really funny too because he's just like a very small guy you know yeah so okay um finish mix uh what happened was John Porter mixed this one but then they had Stephen Street come in and try to Mm -hmm. More. This is part of that that feud that was going on with Morrissey and Johnny Marr. John Porter was the one that produced it, but Morrissey wanted 
and then have somebody else there. So he brought in Stephen Street. So it was kind of like this back and forth. Hmm. And Stephen Street's the one that ultimately mixed it. And Stephen Street, he's great, but maybe this song just there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes there's not a lot you can do to make it better. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So you, you know what's funny? What is on the back of? And I better laugh. No, on the on the back of the CD sleeve. It says, Words by Morrissey, Music by Johnny Marr. It doesn't have anything about, you know, Golden Lights. But if you go to the inside, on the last page, it says, All songs written by Morrissey and Marr, except Golden Lights, written by Twinkle. But on the back, it doesn't have Twinkle's name Can at I all. Can I see that? Well, because they say it inside. But you would think that if they're listing out all the tracks on the top, <laughs> they say words by Morrissey. Well, they're the same for the majority. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. But, you know. All right. Not that, not that it's any scandal or anything. So, Golden Lights, it's it's an interesting song. But the thing is, another thing, too, is it's not really Morrissey's kind of lyrics either. No, it's... It's just kind of this story. We're telling a story, but it's just not in his way. It's just kind of like... It's just an odd fitting, an odd song. To, I, I, for always him to thought, I always thought it was about uh, a kid whose father found fame and was never around. Hmm. That's what I thought the song was. I always thought it was about more like the fan singing it to Morrissey. I always, <laughs> you know, because, you know, it's, yeah. as a. So I never. Sometimes you just. I don't know. It's just funny how. We all perceive things different. Yeah. But then I come to realize it was by Twinkle. So, um, okay, so the, there you go. That's the other the other song. What was the other one uh, song that? So now we're moving on to ju You Just Haven't Earned It Yet, Baby. Thank you. Which was actually um, going to be the A side, going to be its own single. So they had uh, written. Uh, made it and then they started making the, the other tracks for it so this was origi the original single that was supposed to happen but then they came up with Shoplifters of the World which they decided hey this is an even better song hmm. so let's let's listen to we ready to listen to You Just Haven't Earned It Yet Baby mm -hmm. and then we talk about the myths of this song respect story supposedly Oh, there's a part. There's a part I like in it. Oh, you can keep on. But uh, I have it yeah. written down on. Okay. Where they do another kind of thing that. Um, yeah. Okay. So. What? What's that? Uh, at 225. 225. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. That's good. What is this? This is okay, here it is. Oh, that boom. Okay. Wait, just keep it going. It's a build up again. I love that in the, these these later songs. Like <laughs> kind of these stops where they, you know, they're in the middle of the song and all of a sudden they stop. But there's that kind of boom. And then it just fades out. and then I'm Yeah, like a little... Interlude. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, it's cool. Anyway, um, rumor has it that this is something that Jeff Travis said to, to Morrissey. Yeah. That's why the, the, this line, the, where the line came about. He's like, one, one of the things Morrissey says in the autobiography is, uh, he's like, you know why Smith singles aren't number one? Because they just aren't good enough. That's what Jeff Travis told them. What a piece of work. That's a, huh. Yeah, he was really condescending, I guess, but to but let's see. So but this so this is a that that's kind of an example of maybe, you know, you just haven't earned it. You know, you haven't worked hard enough, your your things aren't good enough. And so supposedly this is something that Jeff Travis said to Morrissey. Although he's the the Smiths are the one that put Rough Trade even on the map at yeah. all, you know it's just like 
But I think he was so, like, he believed his own BS so much, you know, that he, he was like, we're, the, we're independent and, and we would have, you know, some, he didn't want to, uh, he didn't want to acknowledge that the Smiths were the only reason they were actually making money. Mm. So he always had to try to put them down. That is, unfortunately, that's, unfortunately, that's a lot of what happens is when, when, when you have this great company and only one thing is, one part of it is making a great amount of money for the company mm -hmm. and the people who run the company don't want to admit it because by admitting it, they give up control. Yeah. And so, um, and so that's one of the, that's one of the, the, the issues that they had was, um, or, you know, that any company has is when, when one area is doing better than everything else, then obviously if they keep acknowledging that, it's going to cause problems. And they can't do that, so they talk down to everybody in that division. Yeah. Unfortunately. But they're the performers. They're the ones that are actually like, hey, you know, we're actually. Well, yeah, that that's true. But I mean, the only difference between something like, you know, Rough Trade and the Smiths and, uh, and let's say a company like Apple and the iPhone is Steve Jobs wasn't in there creating the iPhone. He wasn't in there writing code for the iPhone. It was all the other people who were doing it. Mm -hmm. But you can't necessarily go out there and say, hey, you guys, you know, you, you're the one that made Apple so successful when it was down in the dumps. Because you can't really say that to one division because then they get to... Yeah, but just, just Travis doesn't have any credit for any of the things. I, I understand, I understand that. <laughs> His was always down in the dumps. Smith's come along, you know, and for, and it, actually he does get credit because he, uh, he's the only one that actually signed, he gave them a, a contract right up front. He's like, hey, you know, I like the signal. We want to make it. There you go. Nobody else is willing to do that. And, uh, and then signed him up. So, I mean, he gets credit for that, but I don't, he, he just, I don't, they became so big, they became bigger than his idea, I think, that well, he didn't, he couldn't praise them because that made him look bad because he wanted to be this independent. So it's like he liked the money, but he still had his idea. It was just, it was just this kind of, yeah, well, well, you can't, well, even in, in that situation, you can't be a independent label or garage band label or whatever you want to call it and then have a mega, uh, a mega star like the Smiths, too. Yeah. Because you, you, you just can't, you, you can't say, well, we're a mom and pop shop. <laughs> when you have a huge band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when you are headlining major festivals. Well, that, but that's, a, but the thing is, is that the Smiths were, were huge. I mean, they had number one album, number two albums. Most of their albums got reached number two. I mean, in main chart, main main uh, stream charts in in England. And so it's like, but he's still trying to put them down, though, right to their fate. You know, well, it's like, gosh, why would you do that? You're you are kind of. I mean, you know, still independent. But they're competing in a major market, you know. Yeah. Well, and in the in the wise words of the butler Alfred to Bruce Wayne in the movie. Okay. Which one? Um, yeah, was it the second one? Um, the second Batman. Which? So, I mean, is it what's his name? The British guy, it, or is it? But like Batman Returns or the Dark uh, Knight? See, the Dark Knight back. series. Okay. The Dark Knight series. He, he, he tells Bruce Wayne, some people just like to see the world burn. And it's so true. Some people just like to see the world burn. I'm sure Jeff Travis is one of those. Yeah, I'm doing great, but you know what? I'm going to cause chaos and problems anywhere I can. Just because I'm I mean, I, I understand, though, that Morrissey probably was 
who definitely was not the easiest person to get along with either. He probably didn't help the situation much. He probably got a couple postcards from Morrissey saying, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, you know, it wasn't exactly, Yeah. you know, you know, you're just, we're just talking about, I'm just talking about one side of it. But I'm saying, but if you see the videos of Jeff Travis being, you know, I've, I've seen an interview and he just, the way he talks, he's, he talks down to people. Like, that, he's just condescending. That's just his tone, the way he is. Yeah, I'm like an intellectual. I don't get those people. I don't get those people, because I've been around those people a few times, and I've wanted to punch them in the face. Yeah, that's what you want to do whenever you see, you hear him talk. You're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but, so, I'm saying, yeah. but that's not necess- that doesn't mean that he's that way. It's just his tone. Anyway, he's a, whatever... But he took a chance on the Smiths. He, they're the, he's one of the reasons that they, you know, they're even in our lives. But yeah, that's the thing about the Smiths on uh, Rough Trade is that they were the biggest band on Rough Trade, so they got most of Rough Trade's attention. But if they went with like a more major label, they probably would have been really down the line and perhaps not gotten uh, even as much attention as Rough as Rough Trade gave them. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, yeah, we don't know. Maybe they would have put after they because they, they tried to get off yeah. of Rough Trade and Rough Trade wouldn't let them off. That's 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 the thing that gets that gets me is that they they went to EMI. They were had signed a contract. You know, this is that this is what delayed the Queen is that they'd signed a contract with them and then Rough Trade insisted, no, you still owe us albums. Half Full of Hollow did not count as an album, so you still owe us one more. Took them to court, delayed Queen's Dead. So they were the, you know, even though Jeff Travis was never praising them, saying pot, you know, saying yeah. stuff, you're you're just not your singles just aren't good enough, and all this weird stuff. He he still insisted to keep them on his label. Well, so you, you it's like to- I haven't earned it, but he you know he hadn't earned anything. Y- yeah, yeah. Anyway. Kaz, what do you think about Jeff? Yeah, or you, have, you haven't said a lot of stuff in this one. Do you like this song, though? I oh, like the song. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a fun one. <laughs> well, there you go. Kaz's insights. <laughs> wow. Whoa! Deep. Deep thoughts for Kaz. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> so, uh, this kind of this kind of goes with, like, a few other songs in my mind. Uh, on Louder Than Bombs, uh, mm-hmm. it goes with uh, Is It Really So Strange and She Would Take a Bow for Me. I don't know why, but I just kind of grouped these songs together. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't really have much to say about the song. Because you can go with shoplifters of the world. You just haven't earned it yet. I know, that's why I'm shoplifting. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have to earn it. I got five fingers. Five finger discount, baby. I really like the part... Uh, at near the end when he's going, you just haven't earned it yet, baby. Oh. 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 Ooh, yeah. Uh-huh. I like that. Oh, also <laughs> the part. <laughs> it's almost like a laugh. Yeah. And actually that, later on, what is that song? Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. We hate it when our friends So you kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. Or see, or see, can sing laughing very well. Yeah. Um, hmm. Maybe maybe that is connected to we hate or, hate it when our friends become successful. You just haven't earned it because the reason they don't like it when or more you know is when they become successful is because they don't feel that they've earned it or maybe it was a song that was subpar. No, he, no, really. Like he it was, sent it, it was supposed he to be sent it to James. Jeff Travis. <laughs> okay, he sent this song to Jeff Travis, and this is Jeff Travis's response. And Morrison was like, "You know, those are actually quite good lyrics." <laughs> like, oh. No, this song, this song should actually go with uh, "Frankly, Mr. Shankly." Mm. Makes sense. This was, this was the uh, yeah. This is the single version of "Frankly, Mr. Shankly." This is the Jeff Travis's answer to "Frankly, Mr. Shankly." <laughs> Could be. Yeah, that's actually what you were talking about. It doesn't uh, credit Twinkle on the back. <laughs> it doesn't credit, credit Jeff. Jeff. Travis. <laughs> um, that's the thing. Jeff Travis should have gotten it. Well, he got plenty of money, I'm sure, being the record 
Wait, well, Jeff Travis sues yeah. the Smiths. I want 100%. I want my 25%. I want my <laughs> Everybody wants 25%. <laughs> like, eventually, nobody else can get 25%, guys. This doesn't work that way. It can only go four, 25% and only goes four ways. Yeah, this is not government math. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll just go into debt. Everybody gets 25%. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Um, well, um, anything else? Um, uh, you know what? I don't think so. I think we're good. We got, we yeah. got through three songs. Um, yeah. might well comment cool. below if, if, uh, Golden Lights is your favorite song in the world. <laughs> yeah, no comments. Yeah. Uh, was that good, Steven? <laughs> Do that good, Steven? Do it again? We'll get there. No, it did. No, we'll, we'll get to that song. Oh, man. I'm so excited to cover that album, actually. I just listened. Uh, it's a good album. I just listened to that the other day, and oh my gosh! You know the thing is though, it's so different. It is very. It's different. so different from you know you see the Smiths making this progression because before it's very guitar driven, lyric you know, and Morrissey's lyrics are really like boom boom, and then but then all of a sudden, over time they kind of get away from the guitars. I mean not totally, but then shot or. Uh, Oh, Strange Ways is like kind of a total, almost a total departure. Yeah, and I think uh, Johnny Marr kind of talks about uh, why that is in his book, and I think it talks about it a little bit in here, uh, Songs That Saved Your Life. Mm. Um, oh, he says because because he knew that Mark Mark was listening, and he was he was uh, listening to the Smiths, the so Smiths said, we got to make this a little bit better, because there's a kid in Arizona that is listening to our albums. And, and he just need, hated Golden Lights. And he hated Golden Lights, so we need to step it up. <laughs> step up their game. But little do they know my favorite album is Half Full of Hollow. <laughs> 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 it's all their old stuff that I, I think is like, you know. But actually, I'm just saying like, there's something about that old stuff that's just like so good. Yeah. Um, but the new stuff is great too. What's that one compilation album? Uh, the Sound of the Smiths? that was released like a few years back. That should not have been made. The Sound of the Smiths is just half full of hollow. Oh, really? I I no, don't know. No, no, no. What I'm saying is uh, half full of hollow should just be like your go-to compilation album, not the Sound of the Smiths. Well, I think, yeah, half full of hollow. Actually, though, I've, I've been listening to, and this is back into the singles we're talking about, though, uh, World Won't Listen. Mm-hmm. And it's really good too. The thing about the Louder Than Bombs compilation is like it, like I said earlier, it's got like a huge swath. Yeah. It's got the newer singles yeah. and plus old stuff too. But some yeah. of the versions on there is on. Yeah, some of the versions on here. Like uh, the version for um, uh, That's the old Back house. to the Old House and These Things Take Time. Oh my gosh. I don't I like can't believe you never had yeah, like the chick wants to sing it. Here, play that real quick. Which one? These Things Take Time. Okay, hold on. My nice are cheap and worry. Oh, you're a mother guy. You're such a baby. I love it. It's like, what? Okay. <laughs> I, I swear they have the record spinning too. It's just like, ugh. Yeah. Oh, so like, fast. If you put that compared to like that whole now, 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 version. Yeah, let's. The knowledge here. The full hollow version is so oh, good. Oh, yeah. But then it, or uh, the the one off demo. The, yeah, I love that. Okay. Oh, come on. Because this one still scares you. It just out of nowhere suddenly. So much better. No, it's like the it's like the. Uh, it, it's like the um, um, uh, I, my brain is just not thinking today. Mine isn't either, but that's the, most days. The, uh, <laughs> you know, the when, when when you record something at like a concert, what are those albums called? The Live? No. Bootleg. 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 Yeah, that one where it was recorded too fast, yeah, no, and, too and, slow. Yeah, it's, it's a nice piece of meat. That's the album. And it has a cover of a topless Marilyn Monroe on it. Mm -hmm. And when you play it, you start playing it, you're like, Huh. This Something's doesn't off. sound like the Smiths. It is like 
1.27 times too fast. Because <laughs> it almost sounds like Morrissey, but like they've all taken helium. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They don't plug uh, their guitars into the amps, they just plug them into a balloon. Like, Send me to sleep! Send me to sleep! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. We, at at Barbie's there when we were playing it. It's like, something's we were, wrong with this, man. Yeah, and, and then I would put my finger, which you're not supposed to do with a record player, but I put my finger mm -hmm. next to the record to just slow it down a little bit. I'm like, oh, there it goes. Now it's sounds like them yeah but holy crap. no it's yeah there's something about that version where it's just like it's just too fast yeah about the so anyway what how did we get off on that oh talking about versions of yeah the, so Anyways. there's the the thing with the hat yeah the ladder and bombs is some of the versions aren't as good yeah um okay the point is i'm just tired of seeing uh the sound of the smiths like <laughs> what the i'm just tired well, of who's on the it. cover of the sound of the smiths just all of the Smiths. Um. Mm. The closest the Smiths ever came to putting themselves on the cover of something was uh, the back of the world. Uh, world won't listen. Why? Well, because John, that one guy looks like girl looks like Johnny Marr. Because Morrissey picked uh, that picture because they look. Uh, no, but I, I used to think that that was Johnny Marr. Yeah, that, <laughs> that lady. That's a girl. <laughs> I thought that was Johnny Marr. Yeah, let's see. Anyway, Johnny Marr out with the sisters. No, but I thought it was, I was like, it looks just like Johnny Marr. I know. The hair. Yeah, I mean, you got Morrissey, Johnny Marr, Mike and Andy. I don't know. Them. That's that's Mike, that's Andy. Actually, the, the, the first... Uh, you know how you can tell? Because her eyes are like, I want my 25%. <laughs> dang it. Two dollars. I want my two dollars. <laughs> Oh, that's what we should do. That's that should be our next little short thing. We just put up all of uh, all of Better Off Dead, but every time that kid's on screen, we just replace his face with Mike Joyce's. Two twenty five percent. Yeah, overdub. All right. So I think anyway, that's gonna end okay. So we're uh, we're today. we're done. Um, thank you for listening. We'll have another one coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll have we have one already in the. We'll have two in the off. can right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, keep your eyes peeled, Oliver. Yeah, Oliver's. Yeah, and uh, watch his video. It's he's a really good guitar player. Yeah. Um. Uh, so. Uh, a lot of fun. And uh, like, subscribe, or not, or do whatever. <laughs> yeah. Or just keep watching. <laughs> just keep watching. We don't care. So uh, thanks for joining us, and let's go out with. Uh, you just have an the, Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do that. Maybe that's why our, our views are so low. <laughs> <laughs> we just haven't earned it yet. <laughs> hey, by the way, Jeff Travis, sorry about bagging on you, because I'm sure the Smiths weren't the easiest people to work with either, too. <laughs> and just in case you are the litigious type, we were just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, Jeff. <laughs> Disclaimer. All right. All right. Bye, guys. All right. So we will see you guys later. Signing off. All right. Ciao.